Hello, I'm Dr. Nate Carman, San Benito CISD's Superintendent of Schools. Welcome to this edition of Super Talks. Today, I want to discuss District of Innovation designation with you and where San Benito CISD is in that process. Let me start by saying no District of Innovation plan has been approved or adopted by San Benito CISD yet. The formal process for beginning consideration of a District of Innovation designation starts with a resolution from the Board of Trustees. That took place initially on December 18th, and then the Board reauthorized the resolution on January 22nd. The second step is a public hearing by the School Board. That just took place on February 6th. Prior to starting this formal process, however, administratively, we worked on identifying which of the broad components of a District of Innovation plan we wanted to even consider to bring to the table. This involved input at the district level and input from all campus principals. After we identified four areas to focus on for consideration, we asked principals to seek input from their campuses. Some chose to speak with their leadership teams, others chose to discuss with their full faculty and staff. Then we surveyed all principals to see if we were on the right track and should pursue the process formally. Based on that feedback, we brought forward the four areas to potentially be considered. Those four areas are the district calendar or start date, probationary contracts for newly hired teachers, class size ratio, and teacher certifications. I realize there's been a lot of speculation, rumors, and possibly misinformation about these four areas to be considered, so I want to clarify what it is for each of these that we want to bring to the table for consideration. First, regarding the district calendar. The Texas Education Code Section 25.0811 states that a school district may not begin instruction for students for a school year before the fourth Monday in August. An exemption that we want to discuss as part of a District of Innovation plan is to give San Benito CISD flexibility on the start date and allow an earlier start date. Doing so would help in balancing out the number of instructional days between the fall and spring semester. Currently, our fall semester has just 79 days, while our spring semester has 94 days. The next area to be discussed is probationary contracts for teachers. The Texas Education Code, Section 21.102, Part B, states in part that a probationary period may not exceed one year for a person who has been employed as a teacher in a public school for at least five of the previous eight years. An exemption would allow for a second year on a probationary contract for teachers in this situation. Beginning with the 2019-2020 school year, that second year would give campus principals sufficient time to determine a teacher's effectiveness. Class size ratio is the third area to be discussed for a potential District of Innovation plan. Texas Education Code, Section 25.112, states that grades kindergarten through fourth may not have a class size ratio of greater than 22 to 1 without requesting a class size exemption. Currently, we regularly apply for these exemptions or waivers, and I'm not aware of TEA denying any exemption requests. We allow classes to hold slightly over 22 students because we believe it's the right thing to do for families. I don't plan on telling a family that their child cannot attend a school that they moved in across the street from just because the classes have 22 students. At the same time, it's inefficient to add a third or fourth teacher to a grade level because we're one or two over 22 students. Our current practice is to allow the students to enroll and then apply for an exemption. Including this as part of a, dist a district of innovation plan simply reduces the time and manpower to complete the class size exem exemption paperwork. By no means do we intend to increase class size in grades kindergarten through fourth. In fact, a class size exemption that we currently receive can be approved for any number of students, there is no limit. If this exemption is included in a District of Innovation plan, we can set that limit. A neighboring district has set their limit at 25, for example. The final component to be considered as part of a District of Innovation plan relates to teacher certification, an exemption to the Texas Education Code, Section 21.055, would allow our district to issue a school district teaching permit to individuals who do not hold a teaching certificate, but who the district deems qualified to teach based on a determined set of criteria. The only area we want to discuss in this component as it relates to instructors 
of non-academic CTE courses. The Board of Trustees would be able to issue a district permit based on an individual's professional work experience, their formal training and education, the relevant industry license certification or registration, or any combination of these three areas. Now, it's important to note that the exact exemptions must be specifically identified in a District of Innovation plan. One of the concerns we've heard is that the teacher certification exemption would allow teachers to teach in areas for which they are not certified. While it's true there are districts who have included that in their District of Innovation plan, we have no desire to do so for San Benito CISD. Only the specific exemptions in an approved plan may be implemented. Another concern I've heard voiced is that once we have an approved district, district of Innovation plan, someone will change it. The superintendent, the board, what if the superintendent leaves, as so many have in recent history? What if a new board gets elected somewhere down the road? Well, a plan will be in effect for up to five years, but changing a district of innovation plan requires receiving a majority vote of the committee, a two-thirds vote of the board, notice to TEA, and posting for 30 days prior to approval again. No superintendent or board can alter an approved plan without following this process. I'll finish with the remaining steps as San Benito CISD considers whether or not to approve a District of Innovation designation. On February 19th, the San Benito CISD Board of Trustees will decide on whether to appoint a committee to develop a District of Innovation plan. My request of the board is to use the established Superintendent's Advisory Committee, which consists of representatives from every campus. Once that committee develops a plan, which could consist of any or all of these four areas, it must be posted online for 30 days, a public meeting with the committee must be held, and the plan must receive a majority vote of the committee. The plan must also be sent to the commissioner, although there is no approval required by TEA. The next step for approval is to bring the finalized plan to the board at the April meeting. In order to be approved, it requires a two-thirds majority vote of the board. Finally, if a plan is approved, we notify the commissioner, post the plan online, and send the final plan to TEA within 15 days of adoption. I'm hopeful this information has clarified some of the concerns that are out there regarding a District of Innovation plan as we move forward in making San Benito CISD truly the gold standard in public education. Thank you.